What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Gina Ashe. Right, so today, I'm back with another video. Um, this will be an unboxing of the Envision Pro wireless PC gaming controller uh, made by Scuff. All right, so if you are a console player, unfortunately, this will not work for you. But being that I made the switch over to a PC about a week, week and a half ago, um, got everything set up uh, to game. I went ahead and picked up this controller, um, being that it has some pretty cool features on there, and I saw a couple of reviews on it. So I, what I'm going to do is give my initial unboxing and impressions, what I like, what I don't like, based off of that. Um, and then we're also going to do just a quick comparison between the DualShock um, and the Elite 2. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this video. Let's go. All right, so as you guys can see, I've already gone ahead and taken it out the box. On the back, they have uh, change your game. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And there's your first look, All right? Go ahead and take out the controller itself. Just there, place that to the side. Here is your dongle. So I'm place that to the side. That is B, of course. In the box, you also have an accessories uh, pack here, which has your wire. For those who love playing wire connection, there you go. And then you also have. You have two domed shape um, thumbsticks. All right, you guys can see that dome shape. You get one, one tall, one short. All right. So I don't play dome, but if I did, it's a nice little touch. All right. <clears throat> you also have um, these plates here. So these are used. So on the side here are sax buttons. You guys can see that. You can use this plate, take this off. You could block it off. And then that way, for some people, I've heard that the complaints were when they are doing anything, I say you're pressing, you know, RT, LT, um, LT, whatever. You make a mistake and press this button here, but you can use these to block it off if you have no use for it. Um, or if you find that annoying. For me, I'm going to try to put those to use. I have some ideas on how I want to set up the controller. So I may not be using these, but we will see. <clears throat> All right, so initial impressions. It feels, it feels lighter. Let me see. Yeah, oh yeah, it definitely feels lighter than, than the Elite 2 for sure. And see yeah it feel it also feels lighter than the dual um dual edge all right so it definitely feels lighter than that I, I like the way i like the way this feels in the hand i have uh pretty big hands so see oh yeah it feels like there's pretty good spacing to me um I will say I may have to get used to these inner buttons, the placement on it. So like, if you can see on the Elite 2, the way the, I have these placed, like, you know, these are here, right? Like, so it makes it easy for me to hit these with four fingers, right? I can hit the two inners with these fingers and then hit the two outers with these fingers on here. That's, that's going to be a little bit of an issue if I try to do it that way. So I'm going to have to find a different way to set this up. Um, I may do like, you know, I may do what I do on the inner key here. I may put here. That may work out. See? Yeah, that may work out. That could work out. We'll see. We'll see. Um, And then 
you know, for the dual edge, there, there's only two buttons back here. So for me to, you know, do four, obviously I can't do that. It just doesn't allow for it. Uh, but yeah, so getting back to the controller, what I'm going to do is switch over to Scuff's website and then we're going to go over the controller based off of what we see on their website. Right. So right. we are here on Scuff's website. Um, first thing we see is remappable paddles. All right, so they're talking about the paddles here on the back, something that I was just showing you guys and um, the click. So the ones down here don't have that. The ones down on the bottom, if you can hear, it don't have that mousy click, but the inner ones, if you can hear, it has that mousy click. Um, so these are our remappable paddles. So the side buttons, the side sax buttons. All right, so this is what they are. And they also have that mousy type click going on, all right? Now, if you're, you know, let's say I'm holding the controller like this, it seems pretty easy for me to click the sax button by this portion of my finger. May not be the same for everybody because again, I have pretty big fingers, but I'm clicking that side button here and then I'm right back here, all right? So those are your side sats buttons. Adjustable instant triggers, all right? So they're talking about the triggers here. So if you can see, if I'm playing like a racing game, something like that, triggers all the way in, right? You wanna make sure that those are fully actuating, go all the way down, all right? You can, you know, Accelerate slow, accelerate fast, control it pretty easily. But if I'm playing something like a first player shooter, right? So I can switch that over. So now I switch it over all the way. And now, yes, now we have a mouse light click. Guys, hear that? Now we had that mouse light uh, click. One thing I will say that I'm already noticing is I like how, I like the shape of the triggers. Like y'all see the shape? I love that shape. Like I, it's, it's not easy for my fingers to slip off of that at all. Let's say, so for the Elite 2, I also do like the shape, um, but because of I don't know because of I guess how it's shaped and the texture that's there. If you are pressing a little bit too hard, you're a little bit too excited, you your finger can slip off of this. It has happened to me. It's not often at all, but it has happened. And you can automatically tell with the dual edge. I mean, there's it's so small, right? So I mean, slipping off something like that can be pretty easy. Again, it's not a common thing, but the shape, these are longer. All right, and then they go up a little bit more. All right, so I like that. All right, so those are the adjustable triggers. Next, we have the mechanical switches. And again, like we're saying, right? So you have, you have the mechanical switches. So that's like that mousy uh, type click that's going on there. Uh, Corsair Slipstream Wireless Technology. So, we have our dongle. Now, apparently, the input delay, whether you're doing wired or wireless, on this controller is very, very low. All right, so they're saying that it doesn't really matter if you do wired or wireless. Now, of course, we all know that the most stable the most low latency is always wired. I myself like to play wireless. I, I don't really like a whole lot of wires going on when I'm playing, right? Um, that's just me. I like wireless headsets. I like wireless controllers. That's just a me thing. Um, so a lot of people are the same, but there are other people who like wired headsets, wired controllers, wired earbuds, whatever, right? So that's just, that's just not me, all right? So, 
That's the dongle there. And then we have the performance grips, which are right here. All right, so they call these the non-slip performance grips. So if you are holding the controller, it should be a lot more, a lot easier for you to keep that controller nice and steady in your hand based off of having the performance grips on there. Um, mind you, these are, this is the pro. All right. So if you are looking to get just the envision, then they don't have this on here and we'll get into that when we do the comparison, but these are not included on the regular envision. All right. So here's the big thing right here. Here's the thing that sets this controller apart from any other controller that I've ever played on. And that's going to be these right here. All right. These G keys. All right. So these keys on the bottom here can be programmed to do just about anything you want on PC. All right. All you got to do is set it up in the uh, program. We'll go over the program a little bit later. Um, but these get, let's just say if you want to mute chat, mute yourself, mute the game. If you want, if you are a streamer like myself, I just got into streaming about a good two, three months ago. If you want to stream and you have scenes set up, Right, you got a scene to start, you got a scene to end, you got a scene for intermission. You can set it up all right here, right? So if you're playing a game, you want to go intermission, you need to eat, you need to do whatever you gotta do, boom, click of a button, it goes into intermission, and you don't even gotta pick up the mouse, right? So that's something right there that is going to set this controller apart for me. Um, and I'm pretty sure anybody else who looks to get this controller, right? So that's there um, on their website. The price, the starting price for the Envision, briefly talked about it. The Envision starts at $129.99. Um, let's just say, let me see, let's press sh uh, shop. Right, so the Envision Pro is $179.99. All right, so that's the price difference there. All right, so we're gonna go back. Here's our comparison here. Um, so we see that the Envision Pro has the Corsair Slipstream technology, which provides ultra fast wireless connectivity. So they're talking about that uh, dongle that I showed you guys, all right? The Envision is only wired. So it does not have the wireless technology, all right? Um, you do only have standard full pull triggers, right? So if you get the regular Envision, this right here, it's all you're gonna be able to do, right? So you're only gonna be able to actuate this all the way down, right? For us pro controller users, we have the option to have that rapid trigger, mouse light trigger, um, mouse light click there, right? Um, so, as you see here, we can switch between your full pull triggers and instant mouse uh, click triggers, all right? And that's for the Pro. Um, so you do have the mechanical buttons as you have on the Pro. Uh, you have the side sax buttons as well on the regular controller as you do also have it on the Pro controller, of course. Both can be used with the IQ software. Okay, you have 5G uh, keys on board for both controllers. So again, if the mouse light triggers aren't very important for you, the grip is not that important for you, wireless isn't that important for you, then hey, look, go for the Envision. It's only 129, right? Great price um, versus the Pro, which is 179. Okay, and then of course, like we already said, they have the high performance grip, uh, which adds the comfort and durability, right? So that's the basic uh, unboxing and first initial impressions. Like I said, I do love the way this is sitting in the hand. I feel like I have a little more space, honestly, than the 
um, Elite 2 controller, which is pretty interesting. Um, but one gripe I can already tell immediately is going to be the way these inner um, patterns are placed. That's, that's going to take some time getting used to. I'm pretty sure I get uh, used to it pretty quickly, but hey. All right, so now over to the tech specs and our compatibility, again, is only for PC, utilizing Windows 10 or 11. This is not compatible with Mac or IO, um, iOS, all right? The weight is gonna be 241 to 285 grams. Envision we already talked about is gonna be wired. The Envision Pro have both options of the wireless and wired uh, connectivity. Dimensions are here, your ports are USB-C, and there is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is pretty dope. Um, your thumbstick layout is symmetrical, which is gonna be the same thumbstick layout as your dual edge, right? Same thumbstick layout. I happen to always have played Call of Duty on the Elite 2 or, you know, regular Xbox controllers and it has that asymmetrical <clears throat> setup there. So symmetric, the, the symmetrical layout is something I'm probably gonna have to get used to, but we'll see. Wireless range up to 45 feet. Not sure why you would need that many feet, but it's there if you need it. Um, warranty, this is something that a lot of companies had an issue with, right? We went from weeks to months to now we're up to a year on most companies, controller, uh, major company controller, warranty which is great <clears throat> that is the initial unboxing and our overview of the controller now we're going to go ahead and switch over to the iq software all right guys so we are now <clears throat> in the iq software so once you uh plug up the controller to the i to your pc iq software is going to say that it needs to be updated you're going to go ahead and update it um, you're then going to restart your computer. Uh, once you pull back up the IQ software after your computer has been restarted, you are then going to uh, update the firmware on the controller. Very important, please do not skip updating the firmware on the controller. All right, once you're in, you're gonna see that I have the Scuff and Vision Pro. You're gonna see mappings and hardware mappings. These are two totally separate things, all right? Um, and we'll get in a little bit into that later. You do have the lighting effects. I like the rainbow situation that's going on here, so I'll just leave that. You have triggered dead zones and curve response types. We're gonna leave that as B. For now, you have the same thing with the thumbsticks. Vibration, I already put mine down to 0%. If you are playing a FPS shooter, you do not want vibration. Um, if you are doing anything cinematic, like storylines, anything like that, yeah, put the vibration on, why not, right? Um, but if you are doing anything competitively, vibration messes with your aim in a sense, so you don't want to have that on. All right, so you want to turn that off. And then you have device settings here, all right? You have presets here down in the bottom left corner. So they do have to where you can set this up based off of what they have set up here, or you could do custom. We are going to do custom, right? So I've quickly gone ahead and set up a few actions here. Um, and so we're going to go through them and I'm going to show you how to set up one yourself, all right? It's real simple and easy for me. I have heard that some people have had trouble with learning how to set up, right? Um, or remap. I, I mean, listen, anybody with a little bit of brains can figure this out pretty quickly. I mean, I figured this out like, like that. And this is my first time ever opening up this application, okay? So here's how I have my setup. My lower paddles. I have my right lower paddle A so that I can jump while shooting or get up from a prone position. I have B, right? Um, of course, jumping out of playing A, opening up in paddle A, right? 
Um, B, I have so that I can prone or go down to a, uh, a drop shot. I have up on the D-pad set to the inner paddle here. If I'm shooting someone, it's easy for me to ping them at the same time. But what I've also done is set my right sats key to up on the D-pad as well. Now I did that because I'm, I wanna see if it's better for me to, when I'm shooting, to squeeze the controller and press that sats key at the same time and ping that person while I'm shooting or if it's just the, you know, if I could get used to that in the paddle there. We did speak about the differences between the Elite 2 in the paddle, how it extends outward. Um, these, the Envision Pro, it does not extend outward. So that's something I have to get used to. I also have a macro set here. Now, macros, all right? So if you look on the screen, you can see that I have this macro set here. Um, it tells you when you let, and, and I'm gonna show you, right? So let's say I go to map something new and I go to macro. It tells you press the record button and start typing on your keyboard to record macro. Press stop when the macro is ready. All I did was set my dive to, I press record and I press, um, I press this key here on the keyboard. This is the only key I pressed on the keyboard. This one right here, if you guys can see that. And everything else showed up on the screen. Now, I'm no genius, but I'm pretty sure that's just the, obviously the line of input that happens on the software side and allows that character to do whatever it is that you set, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that just so that you guys understand the macro here is set to that key, which let's open up Call of Duty. And all right, so <clears throat> we have Call of Duty opened up here, right? We have our controller, okay? And so what we're going to do is show you guys how I have it set up on my side. Um, and compare in conjunction with keybinds, which is going to allow my character to, to be able to uh, do what it is I needed to do. In this instance, we're going to be talking about the dive. Okay, so if you guys know, you should know that under gameplay, we have this option here, right? This new option is, is hybrid. It says tap only to slide, tap while holding sprint to dive the reason why they did this is because if you had um tap to slide or tap to dive how we used to have it on you will feel a little bit sluggish when you go to dive right because that that key that b key is responsible not only for your slide but also for your dive so in order for it to dive it has to wait and kind of figure out if you're holding the B key down to dive or if you're tapping it to slide. But well, now we have hybrid. And and because of that, let me just back up, because of that, people started to, to do slide only so that you slide and then press A and come back up or you slide, press B, come back up as quickly as possible to slide cancel. With this new hybrid setting, you're going to tap only to slide. So now our B key is only going to be to slide, right? Then we can tap while holding sprint, which would be LS, right? So we will hold this in and then press B, which is on our back paddle to dive. However, we don't even want to do that. What we want to do, I'm going to show you guys, is go to key binds. We're going to go down to movement advanced key binds. I'm going to hit this. We're going to um, go down to dive and then we're going to press this key, this bracket key on our keyboard to set um, as a key bind. Okay. So now that would, that's what you do in Call of Duty. Also, you want to make sure under gameplay right next to keybinds, you have prone behavior set to go to. 
All right, you want to make sure that's set to go too, okay? Now, in the IQ software, and the good thing, I, the, the thing I like about this software is everything is automatic. If you are literally in the game, let's say you're in BRs and you're somewhere far in the map, if you wanted to quickly change something on your controller via the software, you can do that and go right back into the game and it's automatically updated. So that's pretty cool. Now, look under macro. Okay, macro two, I have shift, right? I have my milliseconds set to zero. This right here means the key is pressed. This right here means the key is released. So it took zero milliseconds for me to press and release the shift key. Then it takes one millisecond to, as a break, and I go into pressing that key that we, the bracket that we key bind to dive. Uh, we're gonna do, let's do zero milliseconds here. And this is pretty cool because you can actually change how many milliseconds it takes for it to do that particular action. But zero milliseconds and then we release that key. So what that should look like for us, and, and just one quick thing, I just wanna know under key binds, shift, if we go down to shift, Where's shift? Oh, uh, sprint, I'm sorry. If we go down to sprint, it's, it's key bind to shift, right? And we already read that under gameplay, under hybrid, it says tap only to slide, but while holding the sprint, which, which is shift, while holding shift, tap, right? We're going to then tap our inner paddle to dock. Well, we don't have to hold in sprint. Most of the times we're sprinting around the map anyway, right? The only thing we have to do is tap that inner paddle and we're gonna automatically dive. And we're gonna go ahead and show you we're in a private, uh, this is just a private match, nobody's here, right? So let's say I'm running and I wanna dive behind that truck, right? So we're running and I'm gonna show you on here. We're running, I tap, and I dive, okay? It is instantaneous. Boom, dive, right? Running, boom, dive, right? Running, slide, boom, cancel, slide, boom, cancel, dive. It's, listen, it, for me, this is next level, because let's say I'm running on, uh, you know, move, move. a building top there, uh, I'm running, boom, I dive quickly and I pull my parachute. And a lot of us, you know, know that you can do that to get from one building top to the next pretty quickly. So we'll um, go back to the program. And so again, now for these keys on the bottom, I don't officially know exactly what I would like to do um, because I use a two PC setup. Now, normally what I would do is set like if I want, if, if I was going to do this and I streamed on the same PC that I play uh, the games on, I would set one of these, but I would set these buttons for my scenes. So like I would set, you know, if you're a streamer, you could do set this button to scene for, for starting your, your um, stream. This one for intermission, this one um, to end your stream, you know, this one to mute turn your music up or down, whatever. Like, I mean, you could do so many things with this. You could set this to uh, mute chat. You could set this to mute yourself in a game. Mute, you know, your in-game chat. Like, it's, it's, it's nice. What I'm probably gonna do <clears throat> is set one of these to mute my in-game chat, mute myself. Um, I'm probably gonna start with those and then I'll figure out, you know, whatever after. But listen, this has been um, a video, you know, a quick unboxing and first impression and, and you know, all of what you can do um, with this Envision Pro controller. You've seen a little bit of the macro, um, tying the macros in. I'm, I'm gonna do another video on how, it, more in depth, on how to set up the macros and everything. So please stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so th this has been another video on how, you know, unboxing how to set up um, 
this Envision Pro controller, man. If you guys made it to the end of this video, number one, I appreciate you. Number two, do your boy some justice and please give me a like. Go ahead and hit that subscribe. And if you want, go ahead and hit that bell so that you can receive notifications when I go live, uh, when I put out a new video. Um, and I would greatly appreciate it, all right? You guys stay blessed. Peace out.